What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts, and I'm back with another video today. I'm going to be breaking down what Tyrod Taylor brings to the Texans, how he fits with what Tim Kelly showed us last season, and also what Pep Hamilton can bring to the table and diversify our offense a bit. It's very important for your quarterback, OC, and passing game coordinator to all be on the same page. And I'm going to show you all the correlations between our scheme and Tyrod's skill set so that we can get an early look at what this 2021 offense could look like. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on Tyrod and Pep Hamilton. All right, let's break down the film of our new offense because the film don't lie. With Tyrod Taylor, you're getting a quarterback who can steer the ship, control the pace of the game, and be that game manager while throwing in some extra flash every now and then with off script plays. But it's his ability to run an offense and read defenses that was apparent in his single game of 2020, and we see the first correlation between his skill set and Tim Kelly's offense, which is the quick passing game out of five wide formations. I talked about how Kelly made Deshaun Watson's life easier with spread, quick game concepts like five wide and motion, and Tyrod excels in this same area. Going five wide with a running back out wide gives Tyrod a coverage indicator. Since a cornerback follows the running back out wide and not a linebacker, he knows it's zone coverage, not man. The Bengals also start in a single high look, so it could be covered three. But right before the snap, they rotate to a two high shell and are actually playing Tampa 2. Now it's an interesting Tampa 2 because usually you'd expect this middle linebacker to drop onto the deeper zone, but the Bengals try to get someone more athletic there, so they drop the nickel cornerback instead. Tyrod reads this cornerback's movement so quickly and knows that with this space vacated, there's no way for the linebacker to make it over to this curl quick enough, and he fires it for the easy completion. The Chargers use a lot of the same spread offense, quick game concepts for Tyrod and Justin Herbert that Kelly did for Watson, and here you see how motion can also help the quarterback read the defense. Again, you've got a running back out wide, and again, you've got a cornerback following him, not a linebacker. Y'all know the drill by now, it's zone coverage. And the call here is to try and get the ball to the sit route over the middle. The Chargers put this linebacker in a conflict of assignment by having tight end Hunter Henry run this post, forcing the linebacker to give up the underneath throw instead of the deeper one. But there's more to this play, particularly with the motion. See how at first, cornerback William Jackson III is pointing at the running back and signaling for help, because he's potentially got two guys who could attack his zone. So the boundary safety walks down and is going to provide help as the Bengals rotate to a cover 3. But the Chargers don't want a cover 3 look, where the safety and the linebacker could guard the sit and the post. They want the cover 2 look they saw before. So they motion the running back, and now Jackson doesn't need that help. So the safety goes back deep, the Bengals run cover two, and they give up the first down. Tyrod is very good at reading these quick concepts and finding the holes in zone coverage. But he's not some gun shy check down Charlie. He's more than willing to take his shots deep, even with pressure right in his face. This throw shows timing, placement, and confidence. Versus the single high look, he's got Mike Williams one on one with William Jackson. So it's good on good, but Tyrod trusts his wide receiver starting the throw when Mike is just barely even with Jackson, but he puts just enough air on this to get it over Jackson, however not too much air where the safety Jesse Bates can pick it off. The last thing I like about this throw is Tyrod's eyes. Bates is one of the best single high safeties in the league, with absurd range. So Tyrod smartly stares him down, manipulating him and holding Bates in the middle of the field for just a second, then he can fire it to Mike. Again, I love his aggressiveness whenever he was given single high looks. I was impressed with Tyrod's touch on deep balls. Here he floats up a beautiful back shoulder fade where only his guy can get it. People always give credit to the wide receiver on these and rightfully so, this is an absurd catch by Mike, but the quarterback deserves a lot of love for putting this to the outside and away from the cornerback, but still giving Mike enough space on the sideline to make the catch. That aggressiveness out of Tyrod will be huge for our offense because Kelly knew Deshaun excelled with the deep ball and so he schemed up open looks for our receivers. Here, he creates space for Cooks on the fade, which is a throw that requires the touch that Tyrod just showed. Now, we don't have a jump ball guy like Mike will, at least yet, but Kelly creates enough space with rub routes for example, so that we don't need to make crazy contested catches. 
And these deep shots were a big part of Pep Hamilton's offense when he was the OC for the Colts from 2013 to 2015. He helped Andrew Luck with his development and now as our passing game coordinator, I expect him to strengthen our pass game while bringing some new schematic additions, simple ones like this double move. The deep passing game isn't always about having the fastest guys. I mean sure, T.Y. Hilton, Brandon Cooks, and Will Fuller are all blazers, but you can make their job a whole lot easier by having them deceive the defense. In addition to goes, fades, and double moves, expect to see a lot of deep crossing routes over the middle of the field, as Kelly and Pep both love these. We see Tyrod can make these types of throws, even with a defender in his face, he'll hit Henry in between the numbers nicely. Deep crossers are great for beating man and zone. Here, Pep dials up a great call versus a cover 3 match blitz. It's a Yankee concept that we should be very familiar with by now, because it's been the Texans' go-to call for years for when they want to take a shot deep. So versus single high, you want to put this safety in a conflict of assignment. The Colts have two deep posts which hold the safety in place. Then this deep crosser should be open underneath, especially when this tight end leaks out to the flat and the linebacker has to go guard him, opening up a massive hole. It's the little details though that I love in this play. See how the wide receiver is lined up in a bit of a tighter split, inside the numbers instead of outside. That's on purpose, because you want him to get to this hash mark as quickly as possible. That's sort of the landmark for when the quarterback's supposed to throw the ball, and the timing of the play call is also perfect because of what the defense is in. The Giants are in zone, therefore the cornerback has outside leverage, because he should have help inside from a different zone. So he's outside of the numbers, while the wide receiver is inside. And that little bit of difference in the field is going to be very difficult for the cornerback to make up on an in-breaking route. So Pep knows this and uses it to his advantage. So what else could Pep Hamilton bring to the offense? Well, he loves the 3 by one bunch formation, where three guys, one could be a tight end, are going to be in this triangle bunch, which gives two guys clean releases and forces the defense to be perfect in their communication. It puts a lot of stress on the defense to be perfect, especially because Pep likes to use a lot of switch releases. So instead of our weapons running routes in the direction that they are starting in, making it easy for the defense to line up, we're going to cross paths of our releases. Here, the number one in the bunch starts outside and then releases inside. The number two in the bunch starts in the middle and releases outside. And the number three in the bunch starts inside and releases up middle. This really messes with the defense's play call. They want the cornerback to follow the number two wide receiver, T.Y. Hilton, no matter what. Then the outside linebacker will take whoever releases outside and the inside linebacker will take whoever releases inside. Before the snap, it looks like this should be their matchup. But after the snap, everything changes, and you end up with the wide open wide receiver. This is a formation that has become very popular in the modern game, as it allows you to put your three best weapons next to each other, and just make life on defense much tougher. Even Aqib Tlaib in this elite Broncos defense will struggle. We see this translate to the Chargers and Tyrod, where they run a quick game concept called Mesh, out of this 3x1 bunch, and it gets them the quick, easy throw. Everything is starting to piece together for the Texans offense and another thing I noticed when watching Pep Hamilton's offense in Indy was their power run game. They loved to pull their centers, guards, and tackles, and defenses didn't know who was coming. But that was the beauty of it. And so we see another offensive mind inside of NRG likes the power run game. David Culley, Andy Bischoff, and now Pep Hamilton. If you do your research on these guys, you watch the film, the vision is clear. You'll have a spread offense with quick game concepts, but also a mix of deep shots and crossers. And then the important thing is combining that with an impactful run game. Something Kelly struggled with, but you need to have at least a somewhat respectable run game to really make your passing game take off because of how important play action is nowadays. And Pep with Indy, he knew this. They were an effective play action team because of how they sold the run with these pullers out of very similar formations. This heavy formation screams run. The pulling guard screams run. And these three defenders take the cheese, leaving Reggie Wayne with all the space in the world. This is also why I've been preaching that having so many tight ends will be vital for this offense. Look at this block and release from Kobe Fleener, and all you need is to get the defense one step behind. Just one step in the opposite direction, trying to stop the run, and boom, that's an easy throw created for the offense. 
Now let's finish this off by circling back to Tyrod Taylor, and he can hurt you with his arm at all levels of the field. But he can also add a wrinkle to our power run game just like the Ravens with Lamar because of the threat of his legs. During Taylor's prime from 2015 to 2017, he had 283 carries for 1,575 yards, which equals a good 5.5 yards per carry. Now, I don't expect him to get near those numbers whatsoever, and I'm not calling him Lamar Jackson, but the production is obvious, and to this day, defenses still have to keep the threat of him running in mind. What this does is make the running back's job easier, as defenders become occupied with Taylor and are a step behind because of the misdirection. Take this option run out of pistol for example. The offensive line blocks left, and that's where the running back option of this run is going. But because of the motion, the tight end, and Taylor potentially running to the right, three Bengals get messed with. 57 has to contain to the outside, 56 goes to the right and gets stuck in traffic, and even the safety bites to the right instead of following the run to the left. Adding the possibility of the quarterback run gives you a numbers advantage and forces the defense to think more slowing down their process and making our run game more dangerous, even if Tyrod rarely ever gets the ball. All right, that's gonna do it for the video. I like the Tyrod signing a lot as he is the ultimate insurance policy for a quarterback situation that continues to get cloudier and murkier. But Tyrod fits what Tim Kelly and Pep Hamilton want to do in the passing game, and he fits what Andy Bischoff wants to do in the run game. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be better than Deshaun Watson whatsoever, not even close to that, but he'll be a fun quarterback to root for and a great veteran leader. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. I hope you all enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. All right, take care, everyone. Come back for more, and remember, the film don't lie.